So now that we have um, solved both of these equations for lambda, since they both equal lambda, that means they also equal each other, right? So um, we can go ahead and set them equal to each other. So I'll say, I'll put 2 fifths times y minus 2 up here. So we've got that. Um, now we just um, simplify this so that we have a relationship between x and y. We can solve for either x or y, it doesn't matter, um, but we just need to get either x or y um, on its own on one side. In this case, we're going to um, we're going to get x on its own on one side just for fun. So let's go ahead and um, first multiply both sides by 3 to get this 3 out of the denominator here. So we'll be left with 2 times x minus 1 equals, when we multiply both sides by 3, we'll get 6 fifths times y minus 2, because we multiplied that 3 here with this 2 to get the 6. Um, now we will divide both sides by 2, and um, we will get uh, x minus 1 equals, divide by 2 would be uh, 6 tenths times y minus 2. And now we can get rid of these uh, parentheses here. Um, we will just add 1. So we'll get uh, x equals, we can also reduce this 6 fifths, um, both of, or 6 tenths, because both of these are even numbers. We can divide both by 2. That actually reduces to 3 fifths times y minus 2. And then we're adding 1 to both sides, so we add 1. So we have now solved. Um, for a relationship between x and y, I think the one thing I'm going to do is go ahead and simplify this um, because we want this relationship to be as simple as possible. So we'll end up with x equals uh, 3 fifths y minus 6 fifths plus 1. So in this case, if we turn 1 in, into um, 5 fifths because we've got a uh, so that we can have common denominators here. Um, minus 6 fifths plus 5 fifths is going to be minus 1 fifth. So we've got uh, minus 1 fifth. And that's actually much cleaner than this up here. So now this is uh, our relationship between x and y. So this is very important. We'll keep this up on the board. Um, now that we have this, the next step, and I know this is a lot of steps, but just stick with me. Um, the next step is to plug in uh, this 3 fifths y minus 1 fifth in for x um, to our original um, constraint equation. So we'll plug this in where we see x. So this is going to be 3 into our constraint equation here. So 3 times, and then what we solved x for, 3 fifths y minus 1 fifth plus 5y equals 47. So if we go ahead, let me just um, boost this up a little bit so you guys can see this um, and I can write easier. So let's go ahead and simplify. We will have um, 9 fifths y minus 3 fifths plus 5y equals 47. I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by 5 to get rid of the denominators, and I'll end up with uh, 9y minus 3 plus 25y equals, um, what the heck, I think it's going to be 235, but oh, wrong calculator. That other one doesn't have battery. Um, what did I say, 235? So 47 times 5, yeah, 235. Okay, so 235. Um, so that's looking like 9y plus 25y. So we're going to have 34y on one side. We will add 3 to both sides to move it over, and we'll get uh, 238. 
that's definitely something I can't do in my head. Um, so 238 divided by 34 is 7. Nice. Okay, so dividing both sides by 34, we get y equals 7. So um, we've solved for y. Now what we need to do is go ahead and uh, plug um, y, plug our answer for y into um, our relationship here between x and y. And we don't need any of this stuff anymore. Um, so we plug 7 in here for y. We'll get x equals um, 3 fifths times 7, which is what we got for y, minus 1 fifth. And of course the point of this being to uh, solve for x. So we'll end up with um, x equals 21 fifths minus 1 fifth. x equals, since we've got common denominators here, we can do 21 minus 1 and combine these fractions, which is 20 fifths, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. So x equals 4. So given that, um, given that x equals 4, um, we have our point now for 7. So let's go ahead and write up here um, our point for 7. Um, so the whole, uh, if you remember way back when we started this video, um, we had to determine whether or not this function had any uh, maximum or minimum points. And if it did, um, to determine whether it was a maximum or minimum. So we've determined that it has some local extrema, but we don't know whether it's a max or a min right now. So um, to determine that, we don't need any of this stuff anymore. Um, to determine whether it's a max or a min, we need to uh, go ahead and use... Um, a formula.